Hello friends, I am John and I am the 3D 80s kid. So you ask, where did you get the name 3D 80s kid? Uh, well, Second part seems pretty obvious. I was born in 1974, so I was ages 5 through 15 during that decade of the 80s. First half in the name, uh, I am the proud father of three boys, ages 16, 14, and 12. And uh, looking for some kind of name related to that, I stumbled upon Triple Dad, and that got shortened to 3D. So there you have it. I am the 3D 80s kid. And so my channel is going to be focused quite a bit on the hobby that I was fortunately able to resume during the pandemic. Uh, like many, I was lucky enough to be able to work from home. So as such, uh, with no commute, I had lots of extra free time and I spent mine uh, pulling out the old boxes of baseball cards from the garage and uh, resuming my collection in this hobby. In fact, I can still remember the first baseball card I ever acquired. It was in my fourth grade class. Uh, the teacher had this prize box that was full of a bunch of cards. And a lot of folks in this class were very excited about one in particular. Uh, we were in the Bay Area. This is where I spent the first 10 years of my life. We're talking California Bay Area, not Tampa Bay in Florida. So San Francisco area on the peninsula is where we were at. And uh, many folks were Raider fans and they were very excited about uh, 1983 Topps football Marcus Allen rookie card. I was a 49er fan. I had no idea who he was at the time. And all I knew was a lot of kids were really excited about that card. And the fact that uh, I was kind of a nerd ended up uh, getting the first choice of prizes from this prize box. And I grabbed that Marcus Allen rookie card and I still have it to this day. Um, so now some of you are asking yourselves, what are you talking about? That's a football card. Uh, Marcus Allen, uh, plays football and you're talking baseball cards. Well, those of us that grew up in the eighties, everything was called a baseball card. Baseball was still the king of the sports in America at that point. So all of these little pieces of cardboard that we are collecting are were called baseball cards at the time. Uh, I myself can't help but using that moniker still, even though uh, the word of the day is sports cards. Um, to me, they are baseball cards. So I will end up using those terms interchangeably. Um, so dove back into this hobby now once again. Uh, when I first got back, it was early uh, 2021, uh, and I struggled to find out what I was going to collect. Uh, there were all kinds of different sets out there from the same manufacturer. It was really confusing, uh, knowing what to collect, all these shiny things. Everybody's talking about hits and parallels and base cards are worthless. Uh, everything uh, needs to be numbered. Uh, autograph cards, that was completely foreign to me where autographs come in the packs. Uh, there was a lot of changes in the 30 years I had been out of this hobby. Uh, and then big one being card grading. Uh, I had never heard of card grading before until last year. And um, then once I got to the point of finally uh, wanting to jump into trying to grade cards, then PSA was shut down, Beckett was shut down, SGC was $75 a card. So um, thanks to watching the channel uh, Retro Hoops Collectibles, shout out to you, Omar. Uh, 
I uh, tried out grading with HGA. Uh, I know the word on them now is pretty down, um, but uh, who knows what's gonna happen long-term. You never know. But uh, they at least got my start in uh, understanding what grading's about uh, and got a few of my cards graded there. Uh, I started out then collecting uh, Basketball Hall of Fame cards. Uh, trying to gather a lot of the cards uh, that I missed out on during my hiatus and a few of the cards that uh, were out of reach price wise uh, during uh, when I was a collector. Uh, I don't know, you might be able to see in the background right up here, Mr. David Robinson was actually my favorite player during the 90s. And that card cost way too much money for a kid in uh, 1989 to afford. That thing was going for $50, which was way out of my price range at the time. And now I get back into this hobby and all of a sudden I can buy that thing for $2 uh, on eBay. It was amazing. So... It was literally the first card I purchased uh, when I came back as far as buying a new card. Um, but I proceeded from there to just try to collect a whole bunch of NBA Hall of Fame players. And I was buying them raw and then grading them via HGA. Um, once I reached the point of narrowing that to a short list of expensive cards it kind of uh derailed my interest in that uh pursuit and um i kind of stumbled around trying to figure out for a while what i was going to do next um ended up being inspired by some of the youtubers out there to go in a different direction uh, biggest influence probably being Baseball collector, Mike Moynihan, seeing his uh, Bench Clear Media show, uh, Golden Age of Cardboard, and just seeing the awesome vintage cards he was showing. Uh, watching him, I progressed then to seeing uh, Paparazzi. Uh, he does a lot of uh, vintage grading episodes, so that gave me a some insight on the differences with the card grading via vintage versus the modern. Uh, one of the things that really turned me off with the whole modern is that it was like unless your card is a nine or better, it's almost viewed as trash. And being 40 plus years old, I don't see that great as I used to as far as... Uh, I need my reading glasses to be able to tell the difference between, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten, as far as the grades go. Uh, you know, obviously you need a, a ten times loop to see the difference between a nine or a ten, but um, it it just struck me wrong that uh, these cards that are still beautiful that are eight or less. Uh, are somehow trash and it's almost a shame to even possess them if they're the modern cards or you know ultra modern is nothing is acceptable but a 10. Uh, so that really pushed me towards vintage cards uh, where uh, this thing these things can be a little worn a little well loved and you're still proud to have them in your collection it's uh, much more enjoyable to me than uh, just needing everything to be perfect. Uh, um, watched a lot of uh, John Mangini uh, videos lately and love his perspective on the whole thing with every vintage card being slightly different. Uh, these things are little pieces of artwork and it's great to appreciate all of them. Um, so I'm just enjoying my ride. I've you know, barely started down the vintage pathway. Uh, fortunately, I got a little bit of a head start on uh, collecting them before all the influencers seem to have jumped on and the prices seem to be rising lately. Uh, but uh, 
you know, I just uh, am enjoying uh, this hobby. And what brings me to YouTube is that I want to uh, find a community, find uh, friends, uh, build relationships. Uh, big shout out to the Vintage Sanctuary. Um, Adam and I have actually gotten to meet in person. That's great. Uh, I, I building a friendship there. We're both in the Portland metro area in Oregon and have a chance to actually see each other in person with some regularity. Um, if it wasn't for uh, his interview on the Baseball Collectors channel, I never would have found him. So thank you, YouTube, already. Uh, so now I'm hoping to expand that network, uh, meet some more people. Uh, can't wait to meet some of the people that inspired me to go down this way. Um, some of the other channels I'm really enjoying watching is uh, Double D Vintage with Dylan, Double Shaka. Uh, love your enthusiasm, your enjoyment for all the cards you own. It's just fun to watch. Uh, love watching the COG sports cards, guys. Like seeing uh, them guess the grades, uh, send them off to SGC and get them back. Uh, it, and it's really fun seeing those two guys, uh, lifelong friends, enjoying this hobby together. It uh, makes me a little jealous. I mean... Uh, until Adam, I had not had a friend in this hobby and since I was in high school. And our big chase card at the time was uh, the 1990 score uh, Bo Jackson card where he's holding the bat over his shoulders. Uh, you know, the classic black and white one. That was uh, the big fun chase card that uh, me and uh, a couple of my buddies uh, were trying to chase together. So um, uh, it's just a good time. And uh you know, the second half of this video here, uh, I would like to show one of what I would call my favorite cards. It's not of any significant value, but I smile when I see it. It uh, just makes me happy to look at it because it's kind of silly, honestly. Uh, and thing is, I did not know this card even existed until I rejoined the hobby now. It's back from, uh, I think, 1991. And uh, how I acquired it is that about a month into uh, me restarting with this hobby, my wife found a uh, uh, posting on the Nextdoor app with someone in our neighborhood that was just going to give away a box of cards. And so she went and picked it up for me. Uh, you know, it was pretty pit clean of anything of value, but I did find a couple interesting tidbits besides this card. Uh, in 1992, Impel made a set of U.S. Olympic cards. Turns out it is the rookie card for Lance Armstrong and Oscar De La Hoya. So I uh, was able to get a couple of those uh, out of this box for free. Um but the big prize for me is this card here that I am about to show you. So without further ado, I will show you one card I think is uh, truly one of the goats. So here we go. Here he is. It's Mr. Rogers looking awesome as ever with his classic sweater and tennis shoes. He is awesome, and if you have not seen the documentary, Won't You Be My Neighbor? I think it's on Netflix right now. It is worth a watch. I mean, honestly, if you can get that through that thing without ever a tear coming to your eye, then I think I am pretty certain you are data before he got his emotion chip, because that thing is, it, it's just inspiring. Uh, the things he did, his purpose and mission to just uh, help children and be a good person. Uh, it's inspiring. It makes me want to be a better person myself. Uh, it makes me want to reach out, be a friend, be a neighbor, uh, and just spread love in the world. Um, that's what he was all about. And I would like to be more about that myself. So 
Every time I see this card on the shelf, it just makes me smile a little bit and be happy it's there. Um, and I hope you enjoy it too. This, you know, if I had been ready to make a YouTube video earlier, this would have been my entry for Double D's contest for those great frames he produced. Uh, so here you go, Dylan. Here's, here's my late entry. Um, and uh, I would love to have the, this guy on my wall anytime. So hope you enjoyed your time here. This is the 3D 80s kid signing off and farewell for now. But won't you be my neighbor? Bye. It's such a good feeling to know you're alive. It's such a happy feeling. You're growing inside, and when you wake up, ready to say, I think I'll make a snappy new day. It's such a good feeling, a very good feeling, the feeling you know that we're friends.